It's uh, Monday, the 22nd of May in the afternoon. I've already gotten started here and realized I hadn't started a camera and I want to. Uh, so you saw in the last video that yesterday I got all of those ribs um, drilled out for wiring and plumbing. Uh, and then today the, um, the replacement doublers showed up here. So I've already gotten started match drilling this one here. Got to do this one match all the ones on the end, get them all cleaned up and well, you know the drill. So I'm just gonna let this camera run and uh, that's really kind of it for today, I suppose. But I think, barring any surprises or things that I haven't caught in the plans, I think that once this is done uh, today, um, tomorrow I will get to start mocking up the wings finally. I've said that and I think every wings video so far. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so I'm gonna get at it. Second time doing these doublers for the rear spar so the process isn't really a mystery. Um, measuring the, the location of these uh, mid-span um, doublers, it's basically uh, 50 and 3 quarters inches off of the outboard edge. Um, that's where you would match up the outboard edge of the of the doubler um, in relationship to the outboard edge of the spar, uh, and then it it comes. You can see how many holes I've drilled in there. So those doublers come with no holes drilled in them. Um, they're bent properly so that their flange nests up against um, quite nicely against the the upper f flange of the spar. Um, and then you just uh, get it clamped down really securely. Um, and I go pretty slowly with it um, because there are a lot of holes and it'd be really easy for the material to move underneath as you're back drilling using the spar as a guide, um, which is why you see me putting a Clico in every single hole as I move the clamps out of the way, trying to make sure that I hold it together. And then also with a little block of wood, um, holding a block of wood behind the material that I'm drilling to just create more clamping force to hold it together to get nice, uh, straight holes. Um, let's see here, um, on the outboard, uh, doublers there, those are the ones that do get, um, countersunk. Um, the very last four, uh, outboard rivet holes, four or five, uh, those get countersunk because those will be the, those will be the rivet holes that attach the outboard rib, but the, um, but the aileron attach bracket will fit over the top of that. Um, and what else is kind of noteworthy here? If you're wondering what I've got in the background there, that's the airline pilot guy, podcast of which I'm a big fan. All I'm, at this angle right here, you can see the mid span in between the two pieces of tape. I said before that I was going to remove the primer from those surfaces for match drilling. I decided the primer for the most part had a really good bond. What I really wanted to do was just knock down the edges around those holes where maybe the primer got mucked up and created little edges uh, before from either Clico's or uh, riveting. So that's what I did. I just took some scotch Brite and scuffed that stuff up. Um, and then later on, after all of this work is done, uh, I cleaned those areas up and just hit it with another light coat of primer to get the, the bare spots. Um, I think now, yeah, moving on to just doing the, the countersinks, uh, for those two outboard doublers. Um, and then the next step will be once that's done, that means that all four of these doublers have been match drilled and countersunk properly. So then um, they'll be moving into the process of deburring and prepping the surfaces. Also, uh, if you noticed in the middle of that span, I, we've showed it before, but um, there's a, a sort of a large awkward shaped hole in the middle of that spar. That's where the, um, 
aileron um I'm not sure if it's torque tube or push tube or push rod or whatever you call it, but that's where it passes through. Um, that's where it passes through from the aileron bell crank. And so on those middle doublers, you need to match that weird hole. So uh, here, just deburring on the scotch Bright wheel. These are, you know, small pieces and pretty easy to work with. And then we'll move on to the drill press. Um, Basically, to get that weird shaped hole, I'll use the step bit to um, try to remove a bulk of that material and um, get down into, uh, and that's what we're getting into right here, um, try to get the edges of that uh, step bit close to the corners of that. You can see it marked out there, yeah, except my hand's in the way. Um, just punch out as much of it as possible possible um getting it close to those edges which just means less uh work once i get at it with the dremel um and then we'll get set up with the dremel tool use a little cutting wheel to uh connect those holes remove the extra material and then um like a heavy sandpaper deburring type uh, wheel inside the Dremel to clean it up to the edges. Uh, one thing that's worth noting, um, if you're doing this, uh, you might get it right the first time, but um, I was pretty cautious about getting up to the line. Obviously that line was just, you know, traced around uh, the inside of that hole when, when it was all clecoed onto the spar after match drilling. <clears throat> and the first time that I did this, I was really careful about not going to like leaving the blue of that line in place, um, which meant that once I clecoed it back on, I had a narrow, I don't know, 30 second um, edge all the way around that, that was in inside, meaning it wasn't quite wide enough. So this time I went ahead and just kind of worked on it slowly until all of the blue line was gone and the shape was correct. And then sure enough, once I put it on, the spar itself, it was a good clean match. Um, I mean, I don't imagine that that hole in the spar is, you know, within microns of being too small. I think that there's, it's probably pretty generous, but I, I don't think it would make any sense for me to risk going a little bit narrower and having it interfere with uh, like the function of the uh, function of the ailerons, uh, that guy there, uh, been really happy, unhappy with my internet. So, um, I'm getting fiber installed in the, uh, the guy who came to do the installation was really cool and very interested in what's going on here in the garage. Um, yep. That's pretty much it for the work. Uh, I guess I'll chime in here with a little update. Well, that about does it for today, Monday. Did I say Monday? Yeah. Monday, the 22nd of May, uh, remaking the doublers, uh, went much more quickly the second time because I've done it before. So, uh, the holes for the pass through for elevator actuation or rather aileron actuation came out pretty well. I only, uh, countersunk the required holes <laughs> in these pieces. So now I'm just going to clean scuff prime, clean scuff, clean prime water the lawn, watch the primer dry, and uh, that'll pretty much wrap it up for today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for following. Give it a like and subscribe if you do. If you don't, thanks for stopping by. Uh, and then tomorrow, um, I think that we'll rivet these back onto the spar and get into um, mocking up the wing and getting ready to start actually riveting some ribs onto the spars. So thanks again for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Decided to get a jump on Tuesday's work while the primer was drying and started uh, clecoing ribs onto the main spar, which was pretty satisfying to actually see this stuff starting to come together.